Welcome to the best guide to homebrewing. This segment is the homebrewing process. Today we'll brew a stout using a recipe that includes malt extract and specialty grains. If you can steep tea, you can brew beer using specialty grains. We'll use the full boil process and start by filling our stainless steel brew pot with six gallons of cold tap or spring water. For those of you using a smaller brew pot, use the partial boil process. Fill your pot with two and a half gallons of water, leaving plenty of room at the top for the boil. You'll add the rest of the water later. It's important that you do not use highly chlorinated or distilled water in your brew pot. First, light your stove and then place the grain bag with all of your grains from the recipe into the brew pot. Heat the water to 155 degrees Fahrenheit and then decrease the heat source to keep the temperature constant between 155 and 165 degrees. As you steep the grains, you may have to turn off the stove to keep the temperature around 165 degrees. It's important that you don't go over 170 degrees. Steep the grains for one hour, stirring occasionally. During this time, you should take your liquid yeast out of the refrigerator, shake it to get the yeast active, and put it in a dark place, such as inside a cabinet, so it will be room temperature when you add it to the wort. And of course, while brewing beer, you should relax and enjoy a home brew or two. After the grains have steeped for an hour, turn off your stove. Remove the grain bag from your brew pot. Don't squeeze the bag and place it in a colander set on top of a cooking pot. Using hot water, rinse the grain bag and collect the rinse water in the cooking pot. Although you won't use an exact amount of water, your rinse water will be roughly a quarter gallon, or a quart. Add the hot rinse water back to your brewing pot. Now we're ready to add the malt extract. Add it slowly using a spatula to stir the brewing water. This will help dissolve the extract so it doesn't burn to the bottom of the pot. After the extract is added, light the stove and turn it on high. As the water gets close to boiling, watch the pot carefully and be ready to turn down the heat. Boil overs can occur quickly if you're not paying close attention. After the water comes to a boil, add your bittering hops. Don't add the finishing hops until later. You can put these in a hops bag or just add them to the boil directly. After adding the bittering hops, Set your timer for one hour. Your recipe should call for finishing hops, also called aroma hops. So add these according to your brewing recipe schedule. After an hour, turn off the stove and prepare to cool your wort as quickly as possible to avoid off flavors or bacteria. From this point forward, it's very important to use only cleaned and sanitized equipment so you don't contaminate the beer. Check out our other videos on how to clean and sanitize your equipment. Using a sanitized wort chiller is the most effective way of cooling the wort, although filling your sink with ice water works as well. Cool the wort down to around 75 degrees, then transfer it to your sanitized bucket. If you're short of the five gallon mark, top off your wort with water. Attach your sanitized hose to the bucket spigot and put the other end into the sanitized carboy. Using the hose, transfer the wort into the carboy. Shake the wort for about a minute to get oxygen into the wort. Now, be sure to take a hydrometer reading to get the specific gravity of your wort. Do not put the sample back into the wort unless you are using a sanitized hydrometer, tube, and funnel. Shake the yeast to reactivate it, and then pitch the yeast into the wort. Fill half of the sanitized airlock with sanitized water and place that on top of the carboy. Finally, put the carboy in a cool dark place for fermenting. After 24 to 48 hours, you should see signs of fermentation and your carboy should have a nice head at the top of your wort. After about nine days, your yeast should have eaten most of the sugar and your wort is now beer. Don't forget to check out our other videos for tips on bottling and kegging your beer.